Watch out, TikTok. YouTube Shorts is coming for you. How's it going, everybody? This is Dave LeClaire with MUO Tech Bytes, and we are here to take a look at the biggest tech news stories from over the weekend because it is Monday, and that's what we do. So why don't you all kick back, relax, and let's learn about some technology news. Kicking things off with our first story, YouTube Shorts is now available as a beta in the United States. It launched back in 2020 in India as a beta, and now it has made its way to US shores. And this, of course, is Google's answer to TikTok. It's a place for users to upload short little video clips with the intention of them going viral. Will Google be able to take the piece out of TikTok's pie? It's a pretty big pie TikTok's got right now, so I'm sure there's room for Google to just, you know, carve up a little bit and just and take a little slice, maybe eat it. We'll see what happens. It's almost like Vine is making a comeback, but in the form of YouTube and TikTok and all these other short video services. Maybe Vine was just ahead of its time or maybe six seconds wasn't long enough. I don't know. But either way, give YouTube Shorts a shot. See if it's a service for you. Maybe you'll find some content creators on there that you really like, or maybe you will be the next big content creator on YouTube Shorts and you'll be rich. And when I say you'll be rich, I mean you'll be rich in fame and views because there's actually no way to monetize YouTube Shorts, so you won't make any money on it, but at least you'll be famous. Moving right along to our next story, apparently iPhone 13 might actually offer one terabyte of internal storage, something Apple has never offered on an iPhone before. So Mac Rumors first spotted a report from Wedbush Analysis, and basically what it says is from a spec perspective, the iPhone 13 very well could end up having one terabyte of storage. Now obviously we are very far from the iPhone 13 even being announced, the iPhone 12 is still very early in its life cycle, but hearing that Apple may be going with that big storage capacity which has been offered by Android phones, or select Android phones for some time, is always good news for people who are on the iOS ecosystem. Here's the exact quote from Wedbush Analysis. From a spec perspective, we have increased confidence that iPhone 13 will have a one terabyte storage option, which is double from the highest pro storage capacity today. And it will also include a number of enhancements with LiDAR across all iPhone 13 models. Some other features rumored to be in the next iPhone is an always on display, a feature many users have been begging for for quite some time ever since it made its debut on Android devices and other smartphones. There's also rumored to be 120 Hertz, which is a game changer in terms of smartphone navigation and using games and all that stuff. It just makes your phone feel so much faster. On the camera side of things, there's reports of a narrower notch coming to the iPhone 13 so you'll get more screen real estate and sensor shift image stabilization across all iPhone 13 models is rumored currently that is only available on the more expensive iPhones. So what I want to know from you is do you want a one terabyte iPhone? If you're an iPhone user do you think you actually need a terabyte of storage or is 512, 256, even 128 more than enough for your needs? Sound off in the comment section let us know. And going on to the next story, Netflix cleaned up at the Golden Globes yesterday. I mean, when we say cleaned up, we mean they really, they racked up the awards to the point that it's like regular TV and movies need to be worried because obviously digital streaming is the way of the future and the quality is rivaling and now exceeding that of traditional ways of consuming video. So here's a quick rundown of everything Netflix won at the Golden Globes. I hope you have some time on your hands because there's a lot of awards here. So The Crown took home Best Actor, Best Supporting Actress, and Best Drama. Trial of the Chicago 7 took home Best Screenplay. I Care A Lot took home Best Actress in a Comedy or Musical. Ma Rainey's Black Black Bottom got Best Actor, and The Queen's Gambit took home Best Actress in a Limited Series and Best Limited Series. That is a ridiculous amount of awards for Netflix, and it just goes to show you that you don't need to come out in theaters, you don't need to come out on normal TV to put out high quality content. Streaming services are taken over, and they show no signs of slowing down, and Netflix is obviously leading the charge, at least in terms of quality. Netflix has a big year planned for 2021. The company plans on releasing a new movie every week throughout this year, so we wouldn't be surprised to see them take home all kinds of awards at the next Golden Globes and the Oscars and who knows they'll probably win some Grammys too and MTV Video Music Awards. The way things are going for Netflix right now they'll just take home every award in every category possible even ones that are not relevant to them. So this next story is kind of a weird one. Verizon actually sent out a tweet discouraging its subscribers from using 5G and recommending they turn on LTE to save battery life. So it's no secret that connecting to data is gonna use more battery. It's just a very interesting take for Verizon who's very aggressively promoting how fast their 5G is and how widely available it is to then publicly tweet like, hey, Maybe you shouldn't use 5G and you'll save battery life. Now don't get me wrong, it, it's not bad advice. Using 5G will 100% drain your battery faster. I mean, if you turn off 5G, you're gonna save battery. It's just a weird bit of mixed messaging from a company who's also pushing 5G. So now, I ask you, 
Do you have 5G where you live? And if you do, do you actually find that you're able to get a stable connection to it? Do you find that your battery drains too quickly when connected to 5G? Basically what I'm looking for is what are your general thoughts on 5G as a whole? And do you think Verizon is right to tell people to turn it off? Your phone is looking for a 5G signal and it's burning more battery. Maybe you just want to use LTE. We should also note that Verizon did end up removing the tweet. So they realized that maybe we're sending mixed signals to our subscribers and we should probably get rid of this message. Who knows? Maybe it was some social media intern who just thought they had a really good idea. It's hard to know with these kind of things. They go through so many layers at a company like Verizon. But either way, it's just kind of a comical story that the company is, is sending out two completely different messages. Thank you so much for watching this episode of MUO Tech Bytes. I appreciate you taking some time out of your busy day to hang out with me, Dave LeClaire, as I bring you the latest from the world of technology. Hopefully you will like and hopefully you will subscribe and hopefully I will see you in the next video.